Once upon a time, two men decided if they were making the cut. Then they made the cut. And now JT and Aaron are talking everything from wrestling to pop culture and beyond. Because it's no holds barred. Will you back down, turn and run? Or stand up with the best? There's no hose barred. As a kid, when you heard the word no holds barred, did it occur to you that it's too many words for what it's actually supposed to be saying? What should it say? Holds barred? Anything goes, no rules. Mm. It's like one of those wrestling things, right? That's too complicated. So we were doing WCF uh, and we wanted to have a no holds barred match. And we had my younger cousin was the ring announcer. And I don't know if he just couldn't read or he just struggled with words. And he called it an aardvark match instead of no holds barred match. And he had it written in front of him. But it came out aardvark match. So when I hear no holds barred, sometimes I think aardvark match. The name of the aardvarks to the anteaters, right? Yeah, I don't know. Whatever. Listen, I, I uh, we are... And then... Yeah. Well, no, I, here, here's the problem I'm feeling right now is I feel you're trying to impose some uh, some barring of holds right now. <laughs> Just trying to talk. I'm trying to have a serious conversation about anteaters versus aardvarks. And what, you're not here for that? The people aren't here for that? <laughs> they both begin with A. Yeah. AA for aardvark, which, you know, a special mm. place in my heart. That's true. True. Some of the yeah. stupidest animals on Earth begin with AA. Smartest people, though. <clears throat> Are they both? All right. We are continuing our greatest dirty world title change ever project. We had a new number one last time. That was exciting. Yeah. You can see it here. This is our current top 10. Shawn Michaels was Bret Hart Montreal. Took the number one spot. So now we'll see if that could be dethroned because we had another big match. This is quite the stretch. This is outside of that initial Hogan run in the late 80s. This is probably the most important stretch of title matches i guess because i I, I don't know if we ever get here again right yeah i mean that was actually a discussion we're having the other day like what's gonna Mm -hmm. dethrone it and and does the match we're doing tonight have a chance of doing so so without watching it what do you think you thinking yes no somewhere in the middle what's your instinct tell you i think it's got a shot um at least like top three for sure i don't know if it's gonna get to number one i mean the the, what the downside of the montreal match was at the in-ring wasn't that great. And I think that's what usually this one as it holds up to as well. Right. That's kind of the knock on it, but this is going to have obviously very good significance, a great moment, um, really good build. So I, yeah, I definitely think it's going to shot so we can, let's fire it up and, and get into it. We're watching Shawn Michaels versus Steve Austin from WrestleMania 14. We are paused at two Oh eight 35 on Peacock or slash VPN WD network, <laughs> wherever you're watching. Um, and we're going to go ahead and get started. No, and we'll talk about it. All right, here we go. In three, two, one, play. All right. <clears throat> this definitely feels like, yeah, I, I mean, it's such a kickoff of an era of mania as well, right? Because, like, I feel like that gap from Montreal to here is, like, this weird little dead zone. There's so much change, and it's such a morphing into what we would know would become, like, the Attitude Era. Yeah, and it's funny. It, is that the first year can't be right like because you know we have that traditional lull after survivor series no matter what mm-hmm. but that's not the first year that happens is it no no <laughs> as someone that's currently watched the last couple of years before this of raw television and pay-per-views i can definitely tell you <laughs> it is not the the first time uh, 96 very much so like and i think 95 is up there as well so no i don't i don't think right. it's the lull i think it's just it it feels like there's a lot of, of questions. Like I remember as a, I liked WCW at the time, but I was definitely like a dirty of Homer. And at the time it felt yep. a little like what's going to happen. I, I mean, when Brett jumped and all these rumors are flying of other guys jumping and it, it felt like there's a potential for things to get real ugly and like WF maybe right. going under, like that's the vibe you got during this. I would say like November, December timeframe. It felt real bad. Like, Oh my God, WCW is on fire. Now they get Brett Hart. 
um, <clears throat> you know, like WDF seemed a little lost. And then right around the build to the Rumble, it just really picked back up. And by Mania, they're like red hot. It's it's crazy, like how good they got as fast as they got. I know 97 was great TV too, but it's just crazy just how quickly they turned it back on. Um, yeah. And I think it's interesting too that like this is the start of an era attitude. And like you think like DX is such a big part of that. But like this is it for Sean. You know what I mean? Like no. this is. And would you would you agree that this is the best version of DX? Oh yeah. All right, we had a quick blip. Uh, we're resetting here. We're at two ten forty five. You ready? Yeah. All right. Three, two, one, play. It sure looks like Triple H is sodomizing Mike Tyson there. <laughs> um, right I mean, behind him, he's possible. reaching around. I mean, if nothing else, he's courteous because that is a reach around. Yes, 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 it is. Um, did you watch the show live? Did you have this capability? I watched it squaggly because mm. uh, we've gotten rid of the box at home, but I was at my girlfriend's house who said she had a box that kind of like cleared it, but it didn't. So we watched it squaggly. So I only heard it. Bitch. Yeah, I ordered this one. It was a. Uh... I mean, it was super exciting, obviously. Like, it really did feel, like, earned after all. I mean, 97 felt earned, but this really felt like, wow, this shit's, like, cool again. Like, just the whole vibe of it. I mean, Tyson was such a big get. Ah, huge. And how badass is he coming out to this DX theme? Yeah. It's the song they would eventually make into Xbox theme. Yeah, and it just suits Mike Tyson so much more. Yeah. Yeah, I I think it was a good idea. Nothing against Xbox, but I mean... No, man. I think it was a good idea doing the heel turn with him in the buildup. Um, I think they kind of, if you just have him play the middle, it's not as exciting, right? It's just Tyson's going to be there, but actually right. having him like be involved in the build, um, yeah, was was That's a good great. idea. Yeah. Did you notice? Did you ever notice the uh, tattoo of Chairman Mao <laughs> on Tyson's arm? Yeah, it's uh, quite the choice. It's on his Is right that- arm, and I just keep what. It's crazy, right? Like, how is that? Like, of all the things, they're mad at the tattoo on his face. There's literally a mass murderer on his arm. Is that Henry Kissinger on the other arm? We got Marvin Hagler. Uh, there. Uh, I hope it's not. That's another another one of those globalists. The fucking globalists now are coming after us. I I, I only, love yeah. um, Austin walk. I just love him walking backstage so simply. There's right. no fanfare. It's just him in his like like the classic Austin, just in his black tights, black boots, walking to the ring. My only issue with this too, though, like with Austin and Brett, was such defined, different characters, right? So like Austin's climb as the anti-hero to take down the world champion and become the anti-corporate champion and all that. When it's Sean, yeah. they're like the same. So, like, to me, like, that's the yeah. only thing you lost with this. Um, like, why would Vince want Sean as champion over him when DX is, like, you could argue they're worse than Austin. Uh, it's certainly it's worse. During this time period, right? So, it's like, when it was Brett, it was kind of like, all right, well, you know, they could have played it up a little bit better, right? As, as Austin and Brett was. So, I do think that was, like, one interesting thing that hurt this a little bit, uh, that took away a little bit. I think Austin was so super over that it didn't matter, but I think the story was less pure without like Brett and him where Brett, you know, had his beliefs and his thoughts and also was yeah. completely divergent from that. I think it's, it's interesting because I don't think there's ever been a guy whose time was clearer than Steve Austin's now. Like it's him. Like right. when they gave the title to Randy Savage at four, you know, you could have made an argument at somebody else. Same thing with warrior. Even Hogan kind of came out of nowhere. Like this was the build to like, okay, like this is so clearly this dude's time, right? Right. So it, on one aspect, it, he was so over it didn't matter, right? That it's not Brett. But that being said, I do think it build and the moment that it's not Brett. And I know it's probably right. early to be talking about that, but that's what I keep thinking about when we talk about it is that like, man, it's great, but it could it should be Brett. Right. Yeah, I've always felt that way on it. Um, it just didn't feel as... Yeah, the feud wasn't there as well. I think they adding Tyson in added a lot to it. Um, For sure. 
which helped. I, I think without Tyson, it may not have resonated as well. Um, I just think the it just got microwaved up off the rumble. Um, yeah. The great entrance here, yeah, because band, uh, you know I'm, I've said this before, but I'm going to reiterate. I think this is the most legitimate Shawn Michaels ever is. Yeah, the way he plays this entrance, I, I, it's subtle and it's not huge. But he legitimately feels like the biggest star in the company here right? because of it. The fanfare, the movement. And it's crazy, but I think this is his best WrestleMania entrance. Yeah. Um, yeah, probably. Well, I don't know. The God one at Whistling WrestleMania Whistling from heaven against The Undertaker. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. But here, I mean, look, it's so simple. He's coming out. But like, I, I think, and I could be wrong. I think it's because he knows he knows that he's got to be fucking determined to make this match work right. because he's so messed up. And this will become a yeah. talking point later as we watch the match, I think. But I just think that it's like he's out here to prove something and it's in his body language right away. Like, right. like you can see he's in pain just from yeah. walking. He's he's in agony just from walking. Right. And he's angry. He's like angry that people are booing him despite this tremendous effort that's happening. And I love that. Well, and I think there's like a defiance to that for the last year he's been painted as someone or two years really that runs, doesn't want to lay down, doesn't want to do the mm -hmm. job. And rightfully so. I'm not saying this, it wasn't true, but I think he like, he's thinking like, okay, I've got mocked because I lost my smile. I got mocked because I got beat up in Syracuse and here I am jerks like i'm out here with a busted back i'm gonna put yeah. your guy over and i'm gonna make it work you know so it almost felt like it's like a defiance about him yeah and that defiance works so well with the character i mean i i you just said rightfully so but i'm not outside of that brett losing the smile mm. where else does he refuse to job well montreal I guess, but so did Brett. So it kind of cancels, right? Like it became this weird, but it does. It becomes this kind I of mean, weird. I mean, the Dean Douglas wills. thing. I don't know how legit that was, but. Well, that was the uh, Marine beating, right? Yeah. I mean, we can act like he lies about everything, which he might, <laughs> who knows, right? But. <clears throat> was he beat um, up enough to not do the job that night? I guess, you know what I mean? Right. Right. I mean, look, even if we give him that one, his behavior with the lost smile seems stupid, but right. who knows? Like maybe the doctor really did tell him that. I don't know. Right. Like right. I wasn't there. Um, I will say off the start of this match, if I remember, I think it's going to happen right away. Austin gives him the middle finger and Michael's just looks so sad. Like it's not <laughs> anger. It's like, he's like a little bit upset about the whole thing. Do you feel like he should have worn, I feel like there's this weird, uh, mix still during this era we talked about it in montreal a little bit when he used um sexy boy and i guess mm. we talked about the dx theme wasn't really around yet but do you feel like you should have had dx themed tights here more than like the Shawn michaels ones you know what's funny is i kind of like i kind of like that he just kind of dx'd his own tights up there's the finger by the way right with the sad look from <laughs> michaels which kills me every time um uh, I like that he kind of just DX'd his gear because it felt, it felt like less clean. Yeah. Like I, I know it's not the case, but it looks like he just put marker on the hearts. And I like that. Cause that's what like, that's what this character would do. I guess maybe I'm just thinking like done green instead of red or something. Was it DX? He wears like a black and greenish, right? When he fights Shamrock, I think he's got like something more like that on. Yeah, maybe, but I, I, I don't know. Like I, I have no issue with it. I, I think he kind of fits the theme of the night, which I, I don't know if yeah. that was on purpose, but everything's red and black and he's kind of in red and black. Um, I love this sequence at the beginning where like, he's like dodging, giving the jab and then escaping and acting like right. a, a dick. The, um, and I guess, you know, we're talking about the build. <clears throat> it hurts that oh. it's not Brett, but they do have a history in 97. These two, I mean, they were tag team champions. They had the magic King in the ring. Like, you know, th there was a relationship between the two of them that you could kind of call back to a little bit. But they don't. No, they don't. They That's don't. the thing, right? Like, it's like, I agree, it's there, but they don't. And these, uh, are you at the part where he's selling the kick, the Mr. Yeah, Perfect kick? Yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah. Oh, with a bad back? Yeah, he's flying like, around. And even, okay, yeah, okay. And his ass hanging He's got his pants, his ass hanging. And I, I can't believe he takes that backdrop to the ground. Oh, it's ridiculous. Like, I mean, Hunter, yeah. Hunter kind of saved him a little bit. <laughs> but, yeah. like, I think it broke the fall so he didn't land as hard on the mat. But Yeah. 
Yeah, like I mean, he's still bouncing around. Like even off the double arm sledge, his right. He's still doing it now. Hunter's attacked him, and Hunter's about to get thrown out. I'm actually surprised they threw Hunter out because it feels like they might have wanted to keep him just to help cover Sean a little bit. You yeah. know, to poke in here and there. I guess he does help him turn the tide here, but. Well, I, I'm I'm surprised that he throws him out this early. Right. Like we're like a minute and a half into the match, and like. I love too that like when when they announced that um uh Triple H and China are barred from ringside, Sean just looks so worried and upset. It's <laughs> yeah. not even anger. It's like like he's not pissed. He's like he doesn't know what to do, which I think is great. Like Yeah, and I mean going back to your point from earlier, and I think we talked about this in the last episode, just how much of this is the prime peak DX. Like Yeah. Just all the skits, all of the um, classic segments, all during this time period, are top of the line. And I, mean, I don't think did Sean does he even wrestle between the Rumble and here? No, no, right? I don't think so. Yeah. Uh, also, Triple H, Ray, and then Austin chasing him and beating him up for no reason is also <laughs> a great <laughs> little bit. Uh, no, I don't think he did. I think he's just been kind of like coasting since that. Right. I. I I can't believe they just did that symbol shot with the the, the, the band symbol. Like symbols can really, I've cut myself carrying symbols. Like they can actually really hurt you. I mean, and those are real symbols. It's not like they're staged ones. Oh, and some <laughs> idiot's going to tell us, stay at home. He knows how to hit, get hit with a symbol. <laughs> Do you feel like this is like the coming out for Ross too? Like I know they did Montreal solo and the Rumble solo, but I feel like this is like the, kickoff of him and King becoming the voices of this era because Vince had been yes involved until October. And to me, that feels like, all right, if they're calling a mania, just the two of them, they're the main raw team. Like, this is it. Like, I think it kind of started already, but it felt like this was yeah. like the real, all right, this is JR and King. Now we're not going to have anyone else. Yeah. 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 I would agree. And I mean, you'll, you'll get the classic call at the end that is played over and over and over again. But I think right. how indignant Ross gets is it's like, you hadn't really seen him do too much of that beforehand. Yeah, no, I mean, not to that level. Yeah, the, yeah, the Horowitz wins and like he had other stuff, but not. This was like his signature breakout WWF well, moment. And, and, and this, oh, that fucking back spot where he goes backwards and can't mm. get over. Crazy. Um, it's also too. I find where Ross leans more into the baby face role. Not that he wasn't before, but right. he's much more of a foil to Lawler I, yeah. I, when they were alone. Yeah, I mean, for most of it, and Chad and I are seeing it, like the most of the back end of 96, he's doing the real smarmy heel for, for you know, gimmick. And then in 97, yeah. he's kind of like the insider voice, you know, like the almost like their Tanae throughout 97. He does the little yeah. interviews and, you know, gives you the insight about people and all that. And then here's really becomes like the the gravitas, the voice of the WF, like kicks off. I'm really hoping that like watching through these, especially these big matches, lets me grow more of an appreciation for him because I feel lately I've been quite down on, on Jim Ross. It's because I'm on WCW, I think. Like I don't love his work. Oh, I love that Austin breaks out the stun gun, uh, like digging deep into the arsenal here yeah. to try and beat Michaels. Uh, but you know what I mean? Like I find like his run until he leaves in WCW, especially the run with Jesse Ventura, so uninspiring. And that's all I've been watching lately. Right. Yeah. He, him and Jesse did not get along. <coughs> um, no. So is that the area you're oh, in now? Watch that? I'm past him. So I'm at, uh, I'm in like, uh, I'm at the legends, uh, 93 shit. I'll say, cause when Tony takes over him and Jesse are awesome. Like they carry a lot Great. of 93. Yeah. Well, and it's funny. The first, I think it's Super Brawl. The first time they're together, they shit all over Ross. Like yeah. without saying it, they're like, "Well, you know, uh, Tony, you're awful prepared." And he's like, "I would never not be prepared." And then they're like, "Hey, <laughs> right, you might yeah, get yeah. fired if you're not prepared." Like it was all that. Like, right. You could tell him and Jesse just did not, did not mesh. Um, no. And Tony was mad. I think as Ross got his got the job he wanted right or whatever at one point. So, um, right. yeah, him and Jesse like are the highlight of most of '93. WCW for me, like they're so they're so great. They're their highlight of 89 in WWF. Yes. Michael's right now selling everything like death. Like, well, I mean, he's if, probably. I don't think he's selling. I was going to say, I think it's, yeah. I think it's legit. <laughs> like, I wonder, like, what's he on at this point? He's on like every painkiller possible, right? Oh, yeah. Everything. He's just loaded the fuck up. The, um, yeah. I didn't, I didn't remember this opening shine being so long either. Like, 
Well, yeah, they're really. Yeah, I mean, Sean's got no offense in. Like we're what almost ten yeah. minutes into this thing, it feels like. And he's still bumping around. He took that that shot from the apron to the table. Like he's not. He's certainly not holding back, right? And it's interesting because, like, that's why I asked at the beginning, like, how many times, like, how many times did he, like, actually not lose the title or whatever? Because he's not taking it easy here. Like, I really think he's going no. out and trying to make Austin. Right. Yeah, Which I think not he's something. Yeah, I think he's trying to prove a point. You think, well, I'm what's curious the when they. Prove? That he's not a. I said it earlier that he's not who everyone says he is, that he's not going to oh, not do the right thing. You know, he's right, trying to right. prove that he is the best, that he can put on a good match with a broken back and right. do all this. I, I'm curious when they realized, like, he was done. Like, I don't think he thought, here, this could be it. And, I, I mean, I feel like there were rumors all through 98 <clears throat> of him coming back. Because then he shows up hmm. at the end of the year as, like, commissioner or whatever. He's around until 99. Like, I feel like it wasn't until... Sometime in '99, where they were like, "Oh, he's probably done," or whatever. It's it's possible. I mean, I I get the sense that he might have thought now, based on some of the things he does and some of the way he acts in the match, because like he takes oh, wow. some really unnecessary risks that I might take if I thought it was my last match. Right. Oh, maybe. Great bell shot. Great bell shot by Michaels. So here's yeah. a question for you. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Then I have a, a long. No, question. I didn't have anything. Go, go for it. Okay, so why is it – why doesn't this match get the fanfare that the Triple H tag match on Raw gets or even the Cody match from this year? I think it does. You think it's put on the same le level? like cause As a performance, H yeah. As a match, I don't know. But as a performance by an injured guy, oh, yeah, I think yeah. so. I think when you think I of this match, you immediately think of Sean grimacing and gutting it out. And, yeah, I, I, I think so. But it's funny because you, there are some people that will still to this day be like, well, Triple H is great because he toughed it out through that match, right? Uh, Cody Rhodes became this like kind of, oh my God, it was incredible. He right. had that torn pack, you know, whereas Michaels, I feel the effort almost gets forgotten here. I think it's gets so like, much of the great stuff, honestly. <laughs> and that, He's just got way bad. more than like Cody does and even more yeah. than Triple H does. He's got so much stuff. This is like... For most people, this might have been the performance of a lifetime, of a career. For him, it's like he's probably got right. 25 more that we could name off the top of our head above this, you know? Yeah. Well, I, I just I, – I just I, – I don't remember it. But as I was watching it and as I'm watching it now, all I keep thinking is, holy shit, like the effort that this takes is crazy. Like just the way he's walking around now when he gets on top to mount, like he can barely fucking move. Right. Like he – and it's like, I, I get that the quad is a bad injury. I get that the pec tear is a bad injury. But like, this feels like a worse injury than either of them, even though he's able to, to do the match. Right. And it's the whole match. It's, it's Triple H is just the end of the match. Cody's the whole match too. But I mean, he does the entire match going into it with this messed up back. So, right. He had a structure around it. I think part of it too, at the time, I just think that that Sean phony bullshitter a whole reputation was so dominant that I think a lot of people thought maybe he was embellishing, like trying to sandbag it almost like, Oh, my back is so bad. You know, like I think that was also a bit of a vibe at that time period. I don't know right. if it really resonated how bad it was until it was like, Oh, he's retired now. You know, he's not coming back because I think I, I thought yeah. he'd be back over the summer and feud with DX. I mean, that's where it seemed like they were going to do it for a while. It seemed like he'd come back. Triple H would kick him out of DX He'd come back and feud feud for DX, you know. Mm. Yeah, I don't remember what I was thinking at the time in terms of his injury. I don't remember at all. But now looking back, it just feels like a crazy effort. Oh um, yeah. Yeah, and Austin. Look, I, what I love Austin in this match, Austin in general, like, got up and started kicking the shit out of him. Right. With the intensity. Yeah, like there's an urgency to his work that does not everybody has. No, and I do think the match itself is a little um, underrated historically. I think I think it's actually. I'm sorry, what was that? I think it's a little underrated historically. The match. I actually think it's. I agree. 
Yeah, I, I think it, it kind of gets shit on too much. Like it's when you put the back injury in the context of the story of the match, like it's it's fine. Like, but I mean, yeah, I mean, you, yeah, can, and you can feel the pain every movie makes. Yeah, and it, and it's crazy, and it plays into the story. And I think he's being smart with how he's working the match as a consequence. Like everything is slow, but the heat is so heavy for both guys that it almost doesn't matter. Right. Right. Like it's, here he's this yelling. Is very dramatic. The, he's yelling it. Yeah. Yeah. But but he's not into the over the top theatrics that he gets into later in his career. Right. No. Like it's. I don't it's know if subtle. he had the energy. Like he knows how to act. <laughs> Right. He's just trying to stand. <coughs> He's just trying to get through the match. Yeah. I also love uh, Mike Kyoto's counts in this match. They're fast and they're heavy. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, Hebner's kind of soft. This guy's right. like, it feels like he's breaking the mat on every slap. I mean, it feels a lot to like a guy yeah. who oh. is, you know, trying to, we talk about like his defiant, this and that, like, He's trying to hang on, right? Like he's been the guy now for a few years. This yeah. dude is juggernaut coming up. He's already run Brett off. That's one. And now, like just when he finally got rid of Brett and is the man, this injury yeah. takes him down, and there's another guy that's even bigger than him that's gonna knock him out. So like I felt like a little bit like I've come this far to finally be alone on top. And yeah. I'm not gonna get the chance now. Well, and, and you say he got rid of Brett, he kind of got rid of the Undertaker too. Right. Like he beat him every time and then Kane murdered him in the casket, right? So, yeah. but him and Brett was such a, a rivalry off screen, just from that standpoint, too. Like yeah. he finally won that war. Like Vince chose him, Brett's gone. Yeah. And then he only lasts two months. That's <laughs> like, because even, That's you know, he was going to lose to Austin no matter what. Like that, you know, injury or not, he's going to lose. But he would have still stuck around. I think he would have turned face. And I think him and Austin would have been the top two faces. Now, I think there's a chance that would have hindered Austin a little bit because Sean might have taken mm -hmm. some of that spotlight a little bit. But you're looking right. at a world where him, Taker, and um, him, Taker, and Austin are like the top three faces throughout 98. Yeah. I like the little shot we just got of Mike Tyson's entourage. Yes. Why? Why? What are they doing there? Like, what are they really doing at ringside <laughs> that the giant corporate security can't be doing? <laughs> oh, great chop block by Michaels. Yeah, I mean, this and is I, all, a lot of – like, Michaels is doing a lot, but it's also a lot of Austin making it work. And I don't want to say he's wrestling himself, but he's really – he's he's making it work, too. You know? If we're watching the match and having kind of opposite reactions to it, because to me, it feels like, holy shit, like, everything Michaels is doing is so compelling. But I think it's because right. of the injury. Well, I think and Austin's look, I like the figure four beating and being in the right spot and playing it, you know, making it believable. You had a guy who's basically a cripple beating him up. Um yeah, but 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 Michaels is still doing all the bumping and the intensity, right? Yeah. So it's like you can see the pain. I think it's smart he's using the figure four since he won the title by submission. Right. Why not go back to it? And I love to Ross and Lawler. We were talking about it earlier about their dynamic. But I, they start tearing into each other here about is Michaels cheating? Is he not? And, and it made me really miss the um, the heel face announcer dynamic. All right, we had another little blip, but we're restarting on Peacock, 233-31. In three, two, one, play. I swear we're going to get this done. We're going to get there. it done. Almost um, there. Sean with the great cheating on the figure four leg lock. Love it. Love it. I love everything. And, and I love Austin. This is see, this is a great little bit that Michaels is doing here. Austin's pulling yeah. away. And the way he's reached, Michaels is reaching back, just desperately trying to get the ropes. Top-notch stuff. Although the mugging on his face now is pretty heavy. Yeah, I mean it's again, I think I think the performance just gets overlooked because he's had so many other great ones. Yeah. And and it's not a blow away match, right? Right. But when in many ways it is. I mean, it's one oh, of yeah, the yeah. best performances in many ways. When you really you know, and I think he knew it had to be a big dramatic main event, right? Because I think in some worlds it could have just been like, all right, go out there, have a two minute match. He hits you with a stunner. We wrap up like, you know, get out. But I think he knew like yeah. they wanted to deliver a worthy main event oh. of a WrestleMania. Right. Oh, look, check that one. Oh, the kick out is so good. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know how he's doing this. Honestly, like mm -hmm. that kick out was so tight. 
was right at two in like nine. Did you have the rumors at the time, like where you were, that they were going to flip this to Austin and Tyson and do Michaels and Owen? No. That was a rumor going around, like some of the hotline stuff I'd like listen to and check out. Like that once they signed Tyson and they were hyping toward it, that they wanted to do Austin Tyson for like the big dream match. And then Michaels would defend yeah. against Owen. It's funny, eh? Like, does that not remind you of what's happening this year a bit? A little, like yeah. Owen, in theory, was the like the logical choice, kind of like Sami Zayn is. But the plan is Cody Rhodes, and the plan is Steve Austin. Now, Steve Austin is obviously a like. I'm not trying to compare them, but like the idea that someone else got hot or was a better opponent potentially. I mean, Austin was the better opponent all along. So I don't. I I mean, it's. I I think the bigger thing. I think they should have done Sean and Owen at the Rumble. Um, Oh yeah, that would be. I think that's where where they should have done it to give him the moment. But you know what? In some ways, it's like, I guess it would have given Owen a world title match on pay per view, but he wasn't going to win. So it's kind of like, all right, well, does it even matter? I mean, I think they might have had a match on Raw. It's exactly like Sami Zayn then. (laughs) Yeah. Well, yeah, but Zayn, like, yeah, it's different. I think it's a little bit different. Owen's not as hot as he was when he came back. No, 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 no. I think Zayn is hot. Don't get me wrong. But I just think it's interesting that, like, the logical storyline coming out of Survivor Series, logically, is Owen beating him. Right. Right? I think the the Zayn stuff, to me, is closer to Foley um, in 99. That makes sense. I think that's more of, like, they airmarked Mm -hmm. Austin to take on Rock at Mania. That's kind of like Cody. And but Foley got like super over, won the title, and like that was the big feud. The difference is they fought 30 million fucking times in that winter. So like we had already they had already kind of done enough where you probably weren't all set not seeing mankind rock again at WrestleMania. Um right. but and Austin's Austin. So yeah. Okay, so Michaels hits that flying forearm, barely able to get <laughs> off the ground. And now he's climbing the ropes for this elbow drop. And this is this is the this is the time where because like is this the last elbow drop that he's doing? I wonder if that's right. going through his head as he's doing it. Yeah, it's, it's like, so hard oh. to know. I, I just, I don't think, I don't think he thought he was done. No, I, I don't because he even wrestles like at his school and shit, like in 99. Like, I just don't think he thought he was done, done yet uh, because he tries to rehab it and stuff. And then I think I he finally has surgery. And that's when they say, all right, you're, you're not finished. coming back from that. I think, I think yeah. that was the, because I'm pretty sure he tries to he tries to rehab it and stuff. Yeah, I could see that. Look, I, I know that when I've gotten hurt or been hurt during performances, a, a lot of times preemptively I've thought, "Oh, I'm done." Right. Like I can't do it. By the yeah, way, yeah, uh, yeah, maybe in the second he's thinking that. Yeah, amazing reversal sequence for the yep. into the stunner. Has it bothered? Does it bother you as much as me that Tyson fucking fast counts him? Yeah, yeah. It always feel like it took away a little bit. And but. it's, yeah, and I kind of wish there would have been, I don't know, like a little more foreshadowing right? Of, of that he was on Austin's side. Like, I don't need it to be obvious, but it's like, it's like he's completely with, with Sean and then he's yeah. not, right? I think maybe what they could have done is down the final stretch had Triple H come back out and Tyson decks him. And then yeah. rolls in the ring and counts to three. I think they were just trying to get through without Tyson fucking something up, is my guess. So they tried to keep it as simple as possible. And then he fucks um, it up. He fucks up the count. Do you think it was a good idea to have him be the enforcer versus the ref? I, I think it was. I, I think you were. Yeah. yeah. Especially with Michaels being hurt. I think they needed like a veteran official in there to help the match along versus having worrying about Tyson working it. Too. Oh, yeah. 100%. I mean, look, it could have worked just as well with Tyson in Michael's corner. Right. Right. The only difference is he wouldn't count the fall. Then he'd probably be more involved. And then does that taint Austin's win? Right. Yeah. I think they did it about his, if he just slows the count down a little bit. Yeah. Cause Tyson's a great addition to the, the whole storyline. So really, yeah. like if we're just arguing about a, a quick count, I mean, whatever. And it's not like it wasn't like, I mean, it was a friggin' stunner. So it's not like he wasn't going to be out for five, five yeah. or six seconds anyway. Right? And he's down for like two minutes as it is. So yeah. Like he's just recovering now. Right. Fucking man, uh, Tyson with the the two t shirts of the WWF era. <laughs> That's it, right? That's ninety eight, right there. Those two shirts. Yeah. DX and Austin three sixteen. All right, so what do you have? Uh, let's see, match quality. What are you going with? Okay, so when I I was because I I go into this kind of thinking like okay, like 
what's my ranking that I have already? You know, is it, is it fair? Is it not? So my ranking before going into this was 3.75. And on this watch, based on, based on the effort, based on the level of difficulty, I'm pretty happy to bump this up to a four and go eight on match quality. Yeah, I think I'm with you. I think I definitely gain an extra appreciation for it, talking it through. Um, it's an insane performance by Michaels. And when you just, the crowd is so into it. It was like one of those perfect nights where it didn't need to be a five-star match with them. Like it, they did oh. what they needed to do. Um, <clears throat> they didn't overstay its welcome either. It's, what was it? Was it like 16 minutes? Not even? Uh, yeah, it's yeah. fine. Uh, no, they probably couldn't have gone <laughs> any longer. No, no, right. Definitely right. Not. And That's I think fun. there's a world where someone may have their King of the Ring match technically better than this. Um, well, it but, is. I, yeah. I think it is. Like, I, I think if, if technically it is, it just if that match has a finish, it's probably like a right. four and a quarter, right? Yeah. I have it as a four, but 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 it's it's not as impressive a, uh, as a performance of this, or as big as near as important. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to go eight as well. Um, significance. I mean, it's hard not to go ten. I mean, it's, it's, it's Austin, right? Like it's, it's his it's first the, world title win. That's it. And like it, it's, it's a complete change in company direction. Yeah. We're already kind of on the way, but now it's as world shaking as when Hogan won. Yeah. And it's, you know, impressive by them that they didn't give him a bullshit title reign sometime in 97. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if that was his fate. Happy to steer yeah. them off of it a couple of times, but right. You know, they didn't end up having him have like a, a the old Scott Keith special rumor, right? That final four he was going to win for a night. Like this really was his first right. world title win. WrestleMania. Yeah. It launches Austin McMahon like the next night, pretty much kicks that off. Or the next, I don't know if it was the next week. It might have been the week it's later, a, or whatever. It's no, it's the next night he comes out. Right, the week he, after that's the picture, right? Yeah, I think he, they sack wax him. I think it's two weeks later, but the night after, I think is yeah, they have their first confrontation. So yeah, I mean. Yes, it's a 10. Um, the moment. So I am at a nine for the moment. And it's because a couple of reasons. I think the Tyson fast count actually really kind of hurts it for me. Um, I think that the moment is hurt by, um, again, we're dealing with nine versus 10. So I don't right. want. You know, I'm not saying that like it's terrible or anything, but I think it's not the perfect moment it should have been with Brett in that match. It's a great moment. It's an all time <laughs> moment. It's yeah. not perfect the way it could have been. And that's why I'm at nine. Yeah. But like to me, that's no longer a factor by this point. Like he's been gone for so long. I think the moment was perfect in what they had to work with. Right. And that Shawn Michaels is still a stalwart of the era from before him. Right. So it's still, it's still passing the torch. It's not like it's someone that didn't sure. matter. It's, it's like, like Shamrock, Shamrock. Right. Yeah. 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 It wasn't like Shamrock or the, even the rock, you know, they didn't hot shot him or so. It's like, it was still an icon of the era before them. It's still a passing of the torch. Um, it's still Austin standing tall with Tyson, Tyson punching out Sean Ross, Austin, Austin, Stone Cold, Stone Cold, Stone Cold, the the stunner. Like it's still all of that. The confetti, everything is still, but it's when you still, think of this era, it's still there. I know the three count has always bothered me too. I didn't come into but, this expected to do a 10, but yeah, to me, it's as perfect a moment as it could have been. See, I, I, I still think there's just something missing from all of it. And I, I almost can't tangibly talk about what it is, but maybe it's because that it's not a, as personal a feud with Brett. Maybe it's because it's in Boston and I don't know, for some reason, the reactions are like a little bit more subdued than they are in other places. Like in this know. particular, they were pretty into that. Yeah. But it wasn't like, it's, I don't know. There's just something missing from it for me. So yeah. Again. All right. Yeah. My brain. All right. Uh, we'll build. Um, so where are you at in this? Cause I'm curious because you've been kind of down on it a little bit. Cause it's not Brad at Sean. I think it's, I think it's, it's, it's similar. Like, I think I am at a nine on 10 for build uh, because it's like the both guys spent the last year feuding with Brett. Right. Right. And then both of them end up together. Now they build the issue with Tyson. Well, and I, I like it and it's great. It's, it's all, again, it's all time stuff, but it's like, they never tie in the little bits. Right. They don't tie in that they were tag team partners and they had that match at King of the Ring. They don't tie in that they were both dealing with Bret Hart. 
Yeah. Right. And then like, so th I think there's a lot of, again, it's a nine versus a 10. So it's not like, obviously I think it's great. It's all time stuff, but it, it I, I can't in good conscience give this the same score for a build that I gave for Brett Michaels, which was based on a year and a half of animosity and bullshit. Right. Yeah. This is where I'm going to go with the nine. This is where I'll ding it for the Brett thing. Not the moment, but the build. Um, because of that and because it is hot shotted, but you got to factor in the rise of Austin into the build because it's really yeah. a story of his, you know, entire come up and the Vince stuff had already started a little bit. Right. So that was part of the build yeah. too, where he said he didn't want Austin to be a champion, like all that. That was a week before, I think, right. Where he says, Oh, hell no, or whatever. Um, so that was definitely part of it. Yeah, it was. Yeah. They had the public workout where they kiss him, they beat him up and kiss him on all that. Tyson turning heel. Yeah, Austin great. Austin and Tyson, then I have the rumble. That's part of the build, right? So that's awesome. So all that really factors in here. Yeah, everything you just said is 100 percent true. And for me, that's why it's a nine instead of yeah. say an eight or a seven. Because I yeah. find a lot of times with these, and I mean we'll see as we go, I guess, but with the rumble win into the main event of WrestleMania, I find oftentimes you can kind of get into paint by numbers with yeah. it. And they don't. They don't. I, I I really love the build. But again, I just don't think it's that next level. All right. And uh, finally, Aftermath. Um, I mean, yeah. it's obviously a 10, but it's yeah. like the title reign itself is short. I mean, there's not a lot to it. So it depends. I know we've talked about like how to look at it. Is it just so the next title change? Is it the aftermath of everything? But it does kick off Austin McMahon. It kicks off Austin Dude Love, which is an all-time classic at Over the Edge. It sets up the feud with Kane. It kicks off the Highway to Hell at SummerSlam. So, I mean, it's it's a pretty iconic three months of TV, even though it's only a three-month title reign. And really, that the next he only loses it for the day. So, in all intents and purposes, this reign really goes until, you know, um, Judgment Day or whatever, or Breakdown, whatever it is, where they screw him. Yeah. Like, I, look, I think it, it needs to get a 10 on just the basis that it starts yeah. Austin McMahon, yeah, yep. which is one and one A of the greatest storyline of all time. It's either Mega Powers or Austin McMahon, right? I yeah. think. And so, just to, just as it's starting that, it's a ten, and then everything else is gravy. All right, so that gives us a final score of ninety three, which is just one behind Montreal. Yeah. So this is our second place match, and you screw in the moment killed us from having a tie um i think it's curious that the montreal match and this ended up being similar because really that only difference is that one point on the build uh i, I mean on the yeah. moment uh we were both a point lower on the in ring and then um you were a point lower oh actually we were both a point lower on the build so that kind of balanced off of the match in ring right. um and then the that point the point difference is you go in nine on the the moment right so, I mean, we talked about it previously. I, I, I don't like this. May be it. <laughs> like, I don't. This might have been the chance, right? To yeah, to catch. And it Montreal. almost did. It really yeah. almost did. Like, yeah, yeah. And, but then again, like I, at the beginning, I wouldn't have thought I was going eight on match goal. Right. No, definitely not. Yeah. Well, I thought I'd be going like uh, seven, probably. Right, because of kind of where I had it before, right? So again, like it's it's interesting where it landed. I I like what I love, and maybe this is the joy of this project, is that uh, watching some of these matches back, I'm growing a like a much greater appreciation for them. And this is yeah. a prime example. Like, this is a great rest event. Yeah. All right. So you want to read down our top ten real quick? Yeah, let's do it. So number ten, another uh, WrestleMania main event. With 67 points, Hulk Hogan versus the Ultimate Warrior, WrestleMania 6. Which is close to falling out of the top 10, which is crazy, but it's kind yeah. of getting oh, what was pushed out? What was pushed out of the top 10 tonight was uh, Bret Hart, Yokozuna, WrestleMania 10. All right, number nine, Randy Savage versus Ted DiBiase from WrestleMania 4. Yeah, great stuff there. I love that match. Number eight, um, Hulk Hogan. Uh, ending the Mega Power storyline at WrestleMania 5 by beating Randy Savage. Uh, number seven, Randy Savage with Ric Flair from WrestleMania 8 with 72 points. Yeah, number six from the main event. Nothing you would imagine being this high, uh, but Hulk Hogan losing to Andre the Giant, which was the shock of all shocks. That's got a 75-point score. 
Uh, one point above that is 76 is Hulk Hogan versus the Iron Sheik from January 23rd, 84, MSG. Number yeah. four, then, we have... Uh, yeah, but... I was going to say number four, 78 points. Royal Rumble 92 with Ric Flair outlasting. And it even though it wasn't fair to him, he did it. Uh, number three, we have Bret Hart versus The Undertaker, SummerSlam 97 at 90. So that's that's the big jump up right there. Yeah, yeah. The Royal Rumble match, which which in is is considered like this incredible, untouchable thing, is 12 points behind number three, which is a huge yeah. differential. Yep. Uh, and I mean, two, these top the three are going to be tough, tough to top. Yeah, tough to top. Yeah, because you really have to have that perfect storm, right? Um. Uh, number two, the match we just watched, Steve Austin, Shawn Michaels, WrestleMania 14. And number one still, Shawn Michaels versus Bret Hart at Sorry Series 97, our number one title change of all time. We'll see. We'll see what gets it, if anything, can touch these top three. It's it's going to be it's going to be tight. Really interesting thing that I'm just noticing as I'm looking at our scores. The top four matches, Bret, Shawn, Steve Austin, Michaels, Bret Undertaker, Royal Rumble, they, they're they're placed in descending order of match quality. Mm. Yeah, that, that we seems have, to be a bit of a, not as bit of a factor to us because of the other stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's the working theory I, I have in general, I think now that like, we'll talk a lot, not us, but wrestling fans will talk a lot about match quality. But in the end, it's storylines and moments that like drive our fandom, I think. Yeah. All right. So we'll be back uh, next week with an episode of No Holds Barred. I believe we'll have another draft up, so we'll see how that goes. And in two weeks, we'll be back. We're going to watch our next world title change from King of the Ring 98. So that'll be a interesting nice. one to dive into, for sure. It's a, kind of a forgotten match. Who will we'll burst between the two of us? We'll see. Uh, until then, subscribe, northsouthconnection.com. You can subscribe to us on YouTube <clears throat> and on any podcatcher app as well. Dookie's been dropped, and we'll talk to you soon. See you, jockass. <laughs>